medical conditions and diseases are unfortunately a part of daily life for so many of us. And one of the ways that we deal with that is through drugs, through pharmaceuticals. Well, today we're going to talk about a company that makes pharmaceuticals for a variety of things. Let's talk about AbbVie today on Stock Stories. All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome to Stock Stories. Hello, my name is Alex Mason. I'm your stock storyteller. And on this show, we decode the business behind the stock. And we're studying every company in the S&P 500 to help you become a better investor and really just learn using a case study type of method how businesses actually work. Because when we understand the business behind the stock, we can make better investing decisions. Now, my wife and I went from not knowing anything about investing to becoming financially independent by 30 years old. And we did that by investing in stocks. So that's what the show is about, helping you learn about the stock market to become a better investor and a better thinker. Let's get into today's episode. Now, what we do on these type of episodes are we walk through the company from their history to their business model, and then look at their financials. So first, let's talk about the history. Now, pre-2013, this company actually was a part of another company called Abbott Laboratories. Now, if you haven't already checked out that episode, we talked about Abbott a few weeks ago. So check them out if you want to learn about them. But AbbVie started out really as its own company in 2013 when they were spun off from Abbott Laboratories. Now, Avi became a standalone company after the spinoff, and then in 2014, they decided that they wanted to acquire another pharmaceutical company called Shire, based in the United Kingdom. Now, this would have been a huge deal for them because they would have not only been able to expand their operations, but also execute what's called a tax inversion. Well, what is a tax inversion and what does it mean? Well, a tax inversion is essentially when a company that's headquartered in one country decides that they want to be headquartered in another country. And the main reason that companies want to do this is because they can save a lot of money potentially on corporate taxes because countries have different tax rates. So a lot of that money that would have gone to taxes can go straight to the owners of the company and they can spend it on dividends or share buybacks or reinvest in their business. So that's what a tax inversion is. And this is exactly what AbbVie wanted to do back in 2014. Now, unfortunately for them, they did not get to execute the deal and they even had to pay a breakup fee of over $1.6 billion to Shire because the deal did not go through for regulatory reasons. All right, now fast forward another several years to 2019, and AbbVie wants to execute another merger, this time with a company called Allergan. And the FTC allowed this deal to go through, but only after the company sold off a bunch of its assets. But that was okay, because what AbbVie management wanted from this company called Allergan is this special product that you may have heard of called Botox. So things like cosmetic surgery. The Botox brand name is owned by Allergan, and when they executed that transaction, AbbVie became the owner of Botox as well. Now, if you're enjoying this so far and you're getting value out of it, show me a little bit of love and just tap that like button. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So now let's talk more about the business model for this company. Why do they exist and why should we care? Well, AbbVie is a biopharmaceutical company, so they make drugs. They make drugs that help people and treat their diseases, things like Crohn's disease or Parkinson's. They also have treatment for things like the eyes, eye care, as well as cosmetic surgery, like the Botox that I mentioned earlier. And they also have products that help with neurological conditions, conditions of the brain. So this is a company that makes drugs for a wide variety of applications. Now, we can't talk about Abby's business without talking about its blockbuster drug, Humira. Humira is literally the number one best-selling drug in the entire world, and it has been for several years. Now, if you're not familiar with Humira, what it does is it helps with a few different conditions, specifically arthritis as well as Crohn's disease, and it's just a huge blockbuster drug. 
Now, the way that pharmaceutical industries work is that in order to sell a drug, a pharmaceutical company will have to get a patent on it. And that patent gives the company the exclusive right to sell that branded drug to the masses, to people who need it. Now, the thing about patents is that over time they expire. And once that patent expires, that means competitors in the space, so other pharmaceutical companies, they can make the generic version of the same drug and sell it for way cheaper. Now for Avi, this is kind of a problem because Humira actually goes off patent in 2023. So as soon as next year, competitors are already gearing up to sell the generic version of this drug. And you know what that means for AbbVie's financials? Well, they're going to take a hit because of this. But we'll talk about financials in just a moment. Let's talk about the different segments of AbbVie's business. They have immunology, which helps people treat autoimmune diseases. They have oncology, they help treat cancers. Aesthetics, so beauty, effectively skincare, aka Botox. Uh, neuroscience, we mentioned that earlier. Eye care products, women's health, and they have other products as well. So they really run the gamut as far as the different types of drugs that they serve to people. It's very important that pharmaceutical companies are kind of diversified in this kind of way where they have drugs developed for all of these different types of diseases and conditions because the nature of the industry is that it's kind of a high risk, high reward proposition. Now, AbbVie states in their reports that for them, it takes somewhere between eight and 12 years just to develop a drug. So between eight and 12 years from concepts to actually selling it because there's just so much testing and research and development that needs to be done and all these kinds of approvals that the FDA has to go through with the company in order to allow that drug to be on the market. So you can imagine once a company develops a blockbuster drug, it's well worth the investment because they're going to be making profits for many years. But the problem is there's a lot of research projects that just simply go nowhere. So the company has to invest in many different areas until something hits. And when something hits, it can hit really big, which is what happened with Humira. So as investors, we have to now ask ourselves the question, now that we understand a little bit about the business model and where this company comes from, does AbbVie have a competitive advantage? Well, they certainly have Humira, and that counts for a lot. They are making tons of money off of it. The thing is, this accounts for a big percentage of their revenues. In 2020, Humira alone accounted for over 43% of Abby's revenue. And this is a drug that's going off patent very soon. So we can expect revenues to kind of go off of a cliff for a little while before the company is able to build back up its pipeline with more drugs that are going to be more profitable. Let's go ahead now and turn our attention to the financials. We want to make sure that this is a business from a numbers perspective worth looking at. So let's go ahead to our ticker terminal. And the ticker symbol for this company is ABBV, ABV, and it trades on the New York Stock Exchange. So we're just going to go ahead and look at it. And we can see, obviously, stock price performance has been really good over the last year. Um, but we're not really interested in that right now. We want to understand the fundamentals of the business. How are things actually working behind the scenes? So we're just going to look here first at the income statement that tells us the profit and loss of the business. And the first thing that's really important is just to look at revenue. How much money is this company bringing in? And we can see that over the last five years, the company has gone from $28 billion in revenue to over $56 billion in revenue. So almost doubling their revenue over a five-year time frame, this is really good. This is really solid double-digit growth here. So I like to see that. Now let's keep going here and actually look at, let's see, the actual net income. How much is the company bringing home in profit? And we can see, okay, the company is making a lot of profit. They brought in over $5 billion in 2017. In 2021, it was over $11.5 billion. So nice overall trend there. It did dip a little bit during COVID. But I want to dig a little bit deeper into this income statement because there are some things that I want to see since this is a pharmaceutical company. I want to look at the general expenses 
and the R&D expenses, we can see here that the R&D expenses went from $5 billion in 2017 to about $7 billion last year, 2021. So, okay, they're investing in their R&D, but it's not like a huge investment, really, at least compared to the revenues. And then their general expenses have ballooned a lot. They went from $6 billion in 2017 all the way up to almost $12 billion in 2021. So they've added staff. They've been investing a lot more in their people. That's what this looks like looking at the, the income statement. And one thing I want to note here that I'm noticing is our gross margin. Gross margin tells us how much kind of at the front end of the of the business when a company sells things and gets revenue and they pay for those initial expenses, how much is left over and what does the percentage look like? That's kind of what gross margin is. And we can see that our gross margins were pretty good at 76%. That's really good gross margin, but they've dipped down to about 69%. So something to keep in mind there, it's still a pretty solid gross margin but it's kind of going in the wrong direction. So that's that tells us that the company is maybe becoming a little bit less efficient at generating profit, but um, nothing too worrisome there. All right, now let's take a look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet tells us what the company owns versus what they owe. And it's just a, a measure of showing the, the solvency of the company. Can the business pay its bills, basically, is what we're concerned with here. And we can see that as far as the cash the company has, uh, it hasn't really changed that much over the long term around the nine, ten billion dollar range. OK, but a solid cash position nonetheless. And let's go ahead and look further down. There's a lot of items here and I don't want to get caught up in the details so much as the bigger picture. A long term debt. This is something that's important. The company has been piling on the debt. They had 30 billion in 2017. It's climbed up to about $64 billion in debt. So that's a decent amount of debt on the books. And it looks like Abby has been paying that off a decent by a decent amount. In 2020, they had $77 billion in debt, and that's gone down to 64. So it looks like the company is addressing this high debt load, and that's something that's nice to see. All right, now let's move on to the third financial statement, cash flow statement. This tells us the money that's actually flowing into and out of the business. And the first thing that we want to look at is cash from operations. How much money is the business underlying business generating? And this is a little bit different from net income just based on some accounting rules. But what we see here is the same general trend as net income. The company brought in about $10 billion in cash in 2017, and that grew to over 22 billion by 2021. So the company is making a lot of money here, and this is great. Now I'm, I'm still a little bit worried because I do expect this to fall because the Humira drug is gonna go off patent next year. So that's something to watch. And then let's keep going down into this statement, cash from investing. So the business is investing a lot. We see this big, big line item here in 2020 $37 billion invested. Well, what does that come from? Well, this was the Allergan acquisition. This is when they bought the company that owns Botox. So that was a big acquisition for them. That's why you see this huge, huge increase in investing cash here. And then lastly, I want to look at the cash from financing segment. This tells us things like, is the company buying back stock? Are they paying back dividends? All of those things are going to be located in this section of the cash flow statement. And we can see here that, okay, I was right about the debt. They had been paying off more and more debt over the years. They paid off over $9 billion. Well, they issued some debt too, <laughs> but overall they paid off over $8 billion in debt in 2021. So that's great. And they also pay a lot of dividends. They paid over $9 billion in dividends this past year. So they've been tailoring off their share repurchases lately, it looks like they've kind of shifted more toward a dividend model for returning cash to shareholders and also just reinvesting a lot in the business itself. All right, so we've taken a look at the financials. We understand the history and the business model of this company. So what do I think? Well, Abby seems like a pretty solid company. They have 
a great suite of products. They made a big acquisition that I think could be big for them recently. The thing that I'm worried about this business, this is a business that has a stock price of about $161 per share right now, which translates to about 25 times earnings. So a little bit on the high end, but not too bad, especially for a company like this that has been growing decently. The problem is, as investors, we're not paying for profits that came yesterday or a year ago. We're paying for profits in the future. And my issue with this is Humira accounts for 43% of the company's revenue. That is absolutely huge. If they were accounting for maybe 10% or less, I wouldn't be so worried. But it's a blockbuster drug that's going to not be profitable pretty much overnight just because generics are going to come on the market and people are going to start buying them. So that is an issue. And I don't really know what the pipeline is going to be looking like for this company, but it is something that investors should really look at if they're considering investing in a company like AbbVie. That being said, it looks like a great company in many aspects. It seems strong in many aspects. I'm just not sure what the pipeline looks like as far as the pharmaceutical issue is concerned. And so I would I would pass at this time just for me personally. Thank you so much for listening to the Stock Stories podcast. That's what I've got for you today. So tune in next week because we're going to be talking about more companies and more mental models. And like I said, we're studying the entire S&P 500. So stick with me. Obviously, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for joining me today. All right. Have a great one.